So funny enough, this is actually a really good shot of him trying to get our safety netting measured out. Uh, we ordered some golf netting, I think it was. And we're gonna use this to, for our safety netting to go around the boat. We'll let you guys know how it goes because it's a lot bigger than what we need. So with the stanchion lines, safety lines, we are gonna add some netting. I got this netting from, I think it was networldsports.com. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive, but the only thing is we're gonna have to actually cut it to length. It's gonna take a little bit more time, but all in all, I think it'll be worth it. We need 24 inches from the deck to the top of the lifeline. So what I did was measured out the 24 inches and then I ran some of the string just all the way down. I'm gonna use it as a guide to cut. Do you like the netting? Una. Una. No. Una. Not so much. So that was the whole reason behind putting up the netting for Una. When we first took out Sersha and did a test run for the motor, there was a lot of vibration. The reason is because I was using these bolts and they only thread down to a certain point so I couldn't get up and I didn't shim it all the way. There was a little bitty tiny gap so I, I couldn't get a good compression on it so there was some vibration. I changed out the mounting and I actually added two rubber grommets and now she doesn't vibrate at all. Some of you guys might follow us on Instagram, but if you don't, we've actually been testing the electric motor in the slip. Thanks Warren for the good tip. Uh, but we found that the motor's getting a little too hot. And I had some little tiny CPU fans that I was testing out and trying to see if there's enough airflow, but not enough. So I'm actually here at the junkyard searching for some radiator fans and just want to test out these fans before I go buy a new setup see if it's enough if it's not then we'll probably have to get a, a liquid cooled motor Let's see what this Mazda has to give us. Mm. That's not gonna work. So I'm looking for newer cars, less mileage, hopefully. You can never tell here at the junkyard. Looks like a lot of the newer cars are already kind of picked through. Fancy. 
gotta take the small victories when you can. Found some radiator fans already pulled for me and both of them spin pretty nice. Seems like the bearings are in decent condition. So we're gonna give these a shot. If these work, I'll probably go to AutoZone and get some brand new ones. That way I know it's gonna work in the boat. We don't have to worry about some failures. Okay, you hear that? Sounds like somebody's doing some testing. Can you hear it? Yesterday, we went out to the uh, junkyard to pick up some radiator fans, hoping that this will help cool down the engine, but I am gonna go outside and show you what Bo is doing to test this thing. Okay, so what are you specifically doing? Tell everybody. So, just testing the motor temperature. Right now, I only have one installed, so I wanna see how well that can keep the engine at a constant 140 degree Fahrenheit temperature. And Brandy's looking at me weird because I'm getting too technical, <laughs> but she wanted me to talk about technical stuff. Look, he's got his little clipboard and everything. I'm measuring voltages as well, just to get an idea of how much draw it's gonna be on the batteries. Uh, we, I do have it at about 1500 RPMs. So uh, I think we will probably keep it around there, maybe a little bit higher, depends on the sea state. So how's it keeping up? It's at 140 now. So we'll see if it goes up or not. Unfortunately, the fan didn't do the trick. We were still getting temperatures up in like the 170 range. But how, how long afterwards? How long were you running it? I'm only doing a 30 minute test window and I'm taking measurements every 10 minutes. We only had one fan hooked up and it was the, I guess the lower CFM fan, so less airflow. So now we're gonna hook up the, the higher airflow one and the lower one and see how well they do together. I sent an email out to Mott Energy just to see how much airflow is required to keep this thing at like 140 and just to even see if 140 is the temperature that this should nominally, nominally be running at. My energy got back to us and they actually said that the motor can actually get up to 130 degrees C before it'll, uh, actually I think there's a shut off at 140 and the lowest rated uh, component is 150. So that's degrees Celsius. Unlike what was recommended at 100 degrees, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, we have plenty of room to work with. But unfortunately, my Sevcon controller crapped out on me, so. <laughs> I'm uh, not able to test the motor right now to see how hot it's actually going to get to. Uh, the guy from Mont Energy said that the motor is just warming up at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So that puts a warm fuzzy feeling in my heart and the motor actually wasn't overheating. The fans are nice though, they cool down that whole motor area. finally raising the sails. It's pretty calm out today. And we just want to see what they look like up.
Thanks for watching. Tune in next week for more adventures. If you like what you saw, please be sure to like and subscribe. If you'd like to see more, tune in over on our Patreon. Link is below. See you next week. Thanks, guys.